So today we are revising uh, many of the themes in our short law course here at the University of Winchester. There were 12 sessions uh, in the law course. Um, there's no reason for that, it's just bureaucratic uh, arrangement, which means, though, that there's probably too much lecturing and too many notes, because there's actually a relatively few very important points that, as a working journalist, you do need to know inside out. Uh, and there's lots of extra detail in Macnays, which is interesting, but it's more of a specialist-type nature. Also, my notes overdo it a little bit as well. They're a bit more focused in, I like to think, the Macnays. They are the kind of... Uh, my notes just take what I believe to be the, the serious points in the law course and emphasise them. But even they go on a bit too uh, indulgently. Um, what you need to know above all as a working journalist who's not a specialist media lawyer is when you might be in trouble and when you have to stop and think and when you have to refer up to your editor or specialist legal advice. So, um, And uh, you're pretty good at that in your practical work. So even when you're doing a sports report and a uh, football match and a guy was sent off a red card for violent conduct, you realised that that was defamation and you realised that you'd better get his name right um, because if you named another player in the team, then that would be um, misidentification and that is a very, very, very common source of libel actions in practice. So all this more, you know, academic stuff about uh, qualified privilege and so on, I went on a bit about that. I can't help it. It is my research topic and I'm sort of required by the university to sort of tell you content of what I've been looking into. But that was a bit too detailed for your practical survival guide. So what we're going to do now is just very quickly go through the main points that you would have to know inside out if you were examined by an external body such as the National Council for the Training of Journalists or to meet the standards that the BJTC requires when uh, it, it inspects the course. Uh, and th really there's three big areas. One is um, defamation, that's libel. Two is the danger of contempt of court. That arises a bit specialist. It only really arises when you're doing crime stories, but you've seen this term on Windle, how effective crime, the nose biter story is and all the rest of it. So you want a lot of crime. Uh, and then the third big area is privacy and confidentiality. And then there's a kind of rag bag of smaller uh, laws that do impinge con uh, confidential um, trespass, uh, copyright, official secrets act. And then there's all the regulatory uh, codes of conduct as well that you, you sort of have to uh, know the gist of them or the, or the spirit of them. You wouldn't necessarily have to... Um, uh, no chapter and verse, certainly not in a test. You wouldn't have to know chapter and verse. So if you were asked, outline the most important points in the Code of Conduct, if you got five or six of them and you paraphrased them and, and it was clear that you had read it at some point and you sort of understood the gist of it, that would be fine. It's not a memory test. Um, there are one or two specific <coughs> statutes that you have to be aware of in the way of a many memory test and one or two little phrases from the statutes that are very good to know, such as, in libel, we'll come to it, um, uh, it is defamatory to cause somebody to be exposed to hatred, ridicule and contempt. You, you should have memorised a few of these kind of very central things. So let's press on now into a, a more structured thing with the notes that I have in front of me. Um, so the first thing we... The first of these three big areas really is defamation. The concept of malice comes up and you need to be able to define it. And the simple definition of malice is writing down with intent anything you know to be untrue. For whatever reason, that is malice. The, the, the ordinary meaning of the word is nasty or unpleasant. Usually malice is also nasty and unpleasant, but it doesn't need to be. And the second point, if you're examined on it, that they will look for, if it's a kind of two- or three-point question uh, in any kind of test, is um, if you are shown to have malice, you are not allowed to offer a defence in a libel action. The first thing they will do is, well, you've said this thing um, about me, Martin Todd, because you hate me. 
um, because uh, uh, I stole your girlfriend or, or something like that. And if you can show malice, uh, then even truth, you know, justification will not be allowed as a defence. Malice is not allowed. The public interest. Um, this is not defined in statute, but it is defined in the Press Complaints Commission Code of Conduct. Um, so that's the, the one we will use. Uh, and it's defined very specifically as three things, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's not an and list, it's an or list. And the three things is, one, exposing danger to the community, or exposing a health risk, specifically a health risk to the community, or, and then this is the good one from our point of view, because it, it broadens out the public interest defence, um, so again, on your very hard-hitting story about Martin Todd, you had a huge amount of... On your very hard-hitting story about Martin Todd...